Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti. And today we're still looking at the armor of God. And I know that some people, uh, they can go right through the armor of God in one shot. But when I'm studying the word, you know, I, I like exposition. I like taking verse by verse. I like words. And so that's why I study words. I study Hebrew and Greek words. I study the letters. The letters have power. The letters have power and they have meaning. And so we need to study. That's why when you hear something that you don't understand, roll it back. Listen to it again. Go to the references. Get online. What does this number mean in the Bible? And you will find that God will open up a lot of resources to you. And uh, my study has brought me to, to greater depths and resources to understand what the scriptures are saying in a deeper way. So let's get deeper today, okay? We're looking at taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, when I was looking up the word take, because the verse before this tells us taking up, above all, taking up, it's the same meaning, but just a little different. So the word in verse 16 that we studied yesterday is very close to this word, take, and take. With the exception that the first one in verse 16 is in reference to accepting and receiving, which is good. And we are, in the word of verse 17, it's in reference to taking it in unto yourself, a thing in order to carry it. So taking up the shield is taking it to yourself, but taking the helmet of salvation is carrying it upon yourself. Now understand that <clears throat> this is not something that we take off. The reason that Paul wants to teach us about the armor of God is so that, is so that we do not take it off, but understand the full, reper, uh, um, <clears throat> the full understanding of the armor of God. Excuse me this morning, my throat. <clears throat> and so watch this now. When you understand something, for example, you didn't know anything about computers, you get knowledge on computers, you learn, you learn, you learn, you don't go home and take it off. It's there. And that's what the armor of God, as you look at every piece, and maybe I'm going to develop something with the, with the armor of God, uh, maybe a, a, a picture, my wife will help me with that, and put the, put the belt and all the scriptures to the belt and you know, the breastplate, put the arm, you know, um, put the, all the scriptures that relate to that. Because when you put the whole armor together, it's the word of God. But many parts, many instances of the word. And so here, that's why it says taking, above all, taking up the shield of faith. Here is, and take, receive it, accept it into yourself. But watch this now. But it also has reference to use, uh, in use of, in place of receiving a person or granting access. In other words, this word is more <clears throat> used in a family sense. Watch this now. It talks about granting access to a visitor and not refuse intercourse. I'm not talking about sex, but intercourse with a person or friendship. It says don't refuse it. So he says take up the intercourse of the helmet. Take it as a friend. Take it as family. And we're going to see why. But now when we look at it, it is like receiving one's family to bring them up and educate them and given instructions, speaking and teaching. This is what this word is in reference to. It's not like taking up the shield of faith where you're, you're, you're protecting yourself from the missiles or the the flaming arrows that come at you, the helmet of salvation is a, a, a helmet that we have information here in the head. And as you look, we're going to look now at the helmet. You're going to see that it, it was a very simple helmet when it first started. Of course, it got elaborate like everything else through time. But the helmet was used to protect the head. And the way that they made it was to protect the head, the temple, the side of the face, and the back of the head. Because remember that knowledge is important. I did a whole series on the three amigos, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And so the helmet of salvation is to protect us from the evil things that come to us. Watch this. It is a thing offered in favor. God gave us a helmet in favor, and we must embrace it. 
and make it our own. It approves us, watch this, in the war, in the battle. If you go into battle without a helmet, you are in trouble. Watch this now in 1 Samuel 17, verse 5. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, meaning of, 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 uh, of brass, of, uh, of metal. And the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Here we're talking about Goliath. It tells us that Goliath had an armor. But David's armor was not of metal. It was not of any wood, but a simple slingshot and a stone that had the name of Christ on it. The Bible says he took it unto himself and he saw a weak spot. This is the important thing. David, his armor was the name of the Lord because when he saw the Philistine, when he saw Goliath, and you know he came to the camp and he saw Goliath challenging the army of Israel, and this went on for 40 days. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He looked at him as an uncircumcised Philistine, not of the Lord. And he says, has anyone challenged him? He said, no. Understand that David looked from afar and he saw the weak spot right here that he did not cover. And he knew because God had trained him in shepherding and playing his guitar and how to throw rocks. That's why he's the first rock musician. Okay, that's a, that's a joke. And he knew that with his slingshot, which he used to practice a lot, he was able to hit a tree, a leaf. I mean, the, the, the young man was really skilled in throwing stones. And he said to himself, he must have got excited. He said, I can hit that. And see, when you study the word of God, here, folks, this is your stone. This is your stone. The word of God is a rock. The Bible tells us that God told Jeremiah, he said this, my word is like a hammer that breaks their rocks to pieces. In other words, God's hammer is stronger than the rocks of the world, but yet the rock, the stone of God, is stronger than any hammer of the world. Are you hearing me? Did you hear that? God's word can destroy rocks, but no hammer can destroy his stone, which is Christ, and it is the word of God. And so here also in Psalms 140, verse 7, And God the Lord, the strength of my salvation, Thou shalt cover my head in the day of battle. Wow. I get excited about that because when I go into battle, I know that I am fully covered in the word of God, fully covered in the power of God. Now, I have a saying that I made up, and you can use this. Quote me on it. When you are hell met, put on your helmet. When you are hell Met, put on your helmet. When hell is coming toward you, you better have your helmet on. Because see, it protects you from any blows of a sword or any blows from a club. The helmet is given for the head to protect the head from any blows that will come its way. It is the most crucial part that must be protected in battle because th here the information of truth is stored. One of the things that most people really neglect when riding a bike is that they're not riding with a helmet. You, we see that all the time, right? I've seen people riding their motorcycles without a helmet. That is a foolish thing to do. Because if you get in an accident, you're gone. Your head is not protected, especially if you hit head on. If you have your helmet and you fall off your bike and hit the ground, you may live. You may have a scratch or maybe a little headache. But you live. But if you ain't got no helmet, you're done. And if you don't die, you're not going to be any good for the rest of your life. And that's why the word of God is so important. That's why I emphasize it so much. We emphasize the word of God so much. Nothing more than the word of God. I do not rely upon the armor of flesh as David went to Saul and said, listen, I want to fight this Goliath. I'm taking the challenge. And, and Saul looked at him, a big man. He, Saul was a big man. He was a tall man and strong. 
He said, David, you're nothing but a child, but here, give him, give him my armor. And when he put it on, he was clunking around. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Rafina? He was clunking around. You could hear it. And he took it off. He said, I, I, this is strange to me. This armor is strange to me. Folks, let me tell you something. If this word is strange to you, it's because you're not spending enough time with it. You got to know how to wield this sword. You got to know how to wield this sword. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two double edged sword, piercing to the dividing of soul and spirit, bone and marrow. And it discerns the thoughts of the heart and the mind. This is where we get the information. If you had no brain, you can't understand anything. God gave us a mind for two things, for truth and judgment. Are you hearing me? Truth and judgment. If we have truth, we will judge the situations carefully and not get into a battle that we don't have to. But when you are going into battle, you got to take the helmet because you're going to be hell met. Hell is going to meet you, and you better have your helmet. Now, I saw something that is very interesting a, a while back, but I want to share something with you that is very interesting. The word your helmet, take up your helmet, taking up the helmet, in the Greek letters, it represents 499. You say, what is that? In other words, it is equal to 499. When you sum up all the letters of take your helmet, it comes up to 499. Let me tell you what 499 represents in the scriptures. And Paul knew this being a Jew, a scholar. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all, the word one God is 444. Now, what follows this? 499 in scripture represents one God. Watch this now. These are all scriptures. You can find them. Worship God or the worshiper of God until the Messiah comes or the prince comes. The host and Jacob called his sons. Write the vision down and run with it. Watch this now. That you may run with it. The helmet is all about running into battle with truth. And understand that 499 represents one God. Now, I want you to see something here. Very important. In the Old Testament, we also find the fulfillment of 499. Watch this now. This is God speaking. Understand that God is joyful to give us his inheritance. Here's what he's saying now. Then I myself said, how gladly would I make you sons and give you a pleasant land. Watch this. The most beautiful inheritance of the host of nations. Here's 499. I thought, this is what God says. I thought you would call me Avi, father, and would not turn from me. Understand what he says here, that he was glad to give an inheritance to the sons of the host of the nations. And here is the same number that represents salvation, that he would give them an inheritance that they would remember and keep it there. And that, watch this, this inheritance has to be protected. When God gives you a promise, you have to protect that promise. Don't let anything come against that promise. Don't let anything come against the word of God that comes against you. Like my wife said, you need to take the sword down and cut down depression, cut down lies. She was giving me a bunch of stuff. You got to cut it down. You got to know how to wield that sword. And it was a, watch, it was a short sword. It wasn't one of these big swords, you know, where you kind of do this. It was a, a short sword because, say that, I dare you to say that four times real quick, short sword. <laughs> it was a short sword because you had to be up close with the enemy. And that's why when you were fighting with the sword, you would take hold of the you would try to take hold of their plate, their hands, their head. And this was an up close battle. That's why you needed a helmet salvation, because sometimes they will strike the head 
and you will survive. But imagine if you don't have a helmet and they hit you with a sword in the head, you are done. And that's why some, some Christians, they can't take the heat of the battle. You know why? They have nothing to fight with. They have very little. Oh, well, uh, the, uh, Jesus loves me. I know that. Where's that in Scripture? I don't know. Uh, he's good. Folks, that's fine. That's good. But it's not enough. God wants us to be thoroughly armed with the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Now watch this. We find, I found 499 in another place. In Exodus chapter, why, I'm talking about the helmet of salvation. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 2, but specifically where he says, I am the Lord your God, watch this, which have brought you up out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt and of bondage. This whole term here, if you, well, let's put it this way. If you took 499 times 5, it's a prime number. It comes out to 2495, and that, this word, what I just spoke, I am the Lord your God, which have brought you up out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, comes up to 2495, which is 499 times 5. Now, no matter how you cut it, God has secrets in his word. Uh, do you believe, I believe God's, God gives us numbers for a reason. I mean, when you look at the tabernacle, make this of, you know, of uh, three feet by two feet, two feet by and a half feet, um, the, Ark of the, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, three feet. When you look at how he told Noah the, the dimensions of the Ark, he didn't just say, build an Ark. He said, let, let the dimensions be. Why? Because God is, I think God enjoys intriguing us with numbers. Do you know that sound is numbers? Remember when we used to play our tapes in the cars? Analog, we played our tape. We were we was recording sound on our analog tape. When, when CDs came in, they had to do it through numbers. I mean, it's still numbers in analog, but they had to do it through numbers. So when you put a CD in, you're listening to music, you're actually listening to a sequence of numbers playing together that makes a sound. And that's why here, the scriptures, they make a sound for us. That when we put on the helmet of salvation, we have the song of the Lord in word that we can go forth and do battle. Hallelujah. Let me go on now. Now, what's interesting here, remember that in Jeremiah, which I quoted, that he was glad to give them the land and if they would follow him. But yet the next verse says, yet as a woman betrays her lover, so have you betrayed me, O house of Israel. It is a declaration of Adonai. Not to put the helmet of salvation on will be tragic. You won't be able to fight the battle successfully. Now understand that when it says take on the helmet of salvation, this is not in reference to the salvation so much that you receive at the cross. In other words, when you first got saved. See, a lot of people say, well, this is people who get saved. This is not talking about that. It's talking about deliverance and protection. The word salvation has many different meanings. So when we first came to the Lord, He saved us and made us sons and daughters. We became born again. We are seated with Him in heavenly places. But Paul shows us what the word salvation means in reference to being delivered. Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 119, he says, For I know that this shall turn out for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He was in a jail, and he knew that this was going to turn out okay because he knew that the saints were praying for him and that the supply, the strength, the encouragement, and the power of the Holy Spirit would keep him, sustain him until that time of deliverance. The word salvation here is deliverance. Now, folks, I am saved. I am being saved and I shall be saved. So when you're in a situation and you say, God, please deliver me, you're saying, God, save me. You're not saying that, Lord, save me again. No, you're, you're already saved. But it's talking about putting on the helmet because you're going into a battle that's going to have to deliver you. God is going to have to fight and deliver you from situations. One battle doesn't win the war. Many battles win the war. That's why we, at times you say, well, I lost this battle. We'll get up and make another battle because 
One battle does not win the war. Many, many battles win the war. Just like this coronavirus that's happening. We can't just sit on our butts and do nothing. We have to study it and find out what's going on. And they're learning more things, they're learning more things about it every day. How much of it is true? Don't know. But they have information. Information. You know what they're doing? They're putting on the helmet of information. Why? Information means information. When this goes into your mind, it not only informs you, but it reforms you and forms you. Reformation, information. That's why, that's why Paul said, and do not live by the patterns of this world, but be renewed in the what? In the mind, in the mind. Be transformed according to the renewing of the mind. The mind is so powerful and it is important for us to fill it daily with information. I'm constantly studying. I need to study. I want to know what God is saying concerning my life. The helmet of salvation is taking Christ himself, meaning that this, in this battle, we must take Christ on in the scriptures. We must know the Savior in the scriptures. We know that which was, we have to know that which has been given to us through the Holy Spirit, that we may be well grounded in the hope of his coming. Salvation. David tells us in Psalms 21, uh, excuse me, Psalms 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when the army rise up against me in this, I will not fear. I will, not, I will be confident. Why? He says, because one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. That's why we have to seek God and know what he says in his word. Now watch this. And he says, and now shall mine head uh, <laughs> be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore, will I offer in this tabernacle, come on, touch your tabernacle. This is your tabernacle. I will offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto, unto the Lord my God. You know, my wife just showed me on Facebook the most precious thing. It was this little uh, newborn baby, newborn, right? Wrapped up and had his arm sticking out. And the mother was singing, um... My hallelujah belongs to you. And at one point, the baby just opened his eyes. It was the most precious thing. I tell you, you can't beat something like that. Out of the mouth of a babe, God will deliver us. God will give us his word. He will lead a nation. And you, to many, you're just a babe. Oh, you have no, you have nothing. You, you, you're young. You, let me tell you something. God can use us right where we are to be the leaders of his people. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 61 verse 10, I will gladly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. What is the garments of salvation? Notice, we're saved. We are clothed with Christ. The garments are the doctrines of God. Every time you learn, listen, every time you learn a doctrine, and you put it on, you walk in that. That's why, by the grace of God, if I have to speak on something, which garment of the word I'm going to put on today? Which garment of the word I'm going to put on today? Maybe God wants me to speak about faith, then Put on the, the garment, the doctrine of faith. Whatever it is, he clothed you with the garments of salvation. He have covered me with the robe of righteousness. Notice that the robe of righteousness is where we stand in Christ, but yet the word of God. Remember that they who, who only preach the milk does not know the instruction of the word of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks, decks himself 
with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. Folks, what is that talking about? We're not talking about walking around adorned just with natural jewels. You know, when you see a person with jewelry and all that, it, it kind of looks nice, it shines out. But folks, right here, come on. The Word, the Word. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It is Theos. It is Elohim. It is His Word. And when we take it into our minds, it melts into our hearts eventually. It works all together to keep us safe from the evil one. Why? Because we have a sword. Check this one. Exodus 32, 27. And he said unto me, Thus say to the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out of the gate to gate throughout his camp, and slay every man. Watch this. His brother and every man, his companion and every man, his neighbor. What was going on here? Well, remember that Moses went up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. And when he, listen, he took, he took too long for the people. Where's Moses? He ain't coming down. He's gone. And so they told Aaron, make us a God. And so we know that Aaron somehow was convinced or maybe afraid, however it was. He took all their gold, melted it, and made a golden calf. You know about the golden calf. And man, they started to party and have orgies and get drunk. I mean, you name it. They were partying before that golden calf, something that came out of Egypt. Egypt was coming out of them. You want to know why? Because they knew that Moses was going up to receive the word of God. They were go he was going to receive something. And instead of keeping that hope in their mind that their leader was alive, that he was before the very presence of God, that he would return, you know what happened? They lost their hope. And that's why a lot of Christians, you know, you get weak while you're going in this world. You get weak because you're not in the word of God. The Word of God. Folks, the Word of God. La Palabra de Dios. Stay in the Word. Hmm. Real quick now. He came down because Moses, God told him, God told Moses in his presence, go down for the people have corrupted themselves. Are you hearing me? He comes down with the Ten Commandments. Joshua is in between the people and Moses. He's waiting. So as Moses comes down to the mountain, he's glad to see Moses, and he says, the people are celebrating. He says, this is not the sound of joyful celebration I'm hearing, meaning holy celebration, but the sound of rebellion. And he goes down. See, you know why Joshua couldn't discern it? Because he was not in the presence of God the way Jacob was. That, see, you got you to gotta stay close. Even, even in the tabernacle, the Bible tells us that Moses would go to his tabernacle, but Joshua stood in the tabernacle. He wanted to be with God. So he comes down. He gets down there. He sees the golden calf. He sees all the people. And whatever he did, he shouted. They stopped. And the Bible says that he took the Ten Commandments and threw them down at the foot of the mountain. He took that golden calf. He, he, he grinded it down to powder, scattered it upon, upon the waters, and he made Israel drink it. You know why? They took off the helmet of salvation, the helmet of hope. They didn't bear the sword. And you know what God told them? Who is on the Lord's side? And all the Levites rallied to him. They went to him. And he said, take the sword on your side and go and begin to stab, kill all of these people that were rebellion. Folks, thousands of people died. The spirit, Numa, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of man, which is the Word of God. I'm going to stop here, but here I want to show you something in Hebrews 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. At times when we're studying the Word of God, we may not see clearly what we want to see, but this is the time... Sometimes when I used to study, I would get frustrated and I would get, be just tired because I, I, can't, I can't understand it. And I remember the Lord told me, press in, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. And as I read, I started to understand because the Spirit gave me wisdom. 
there are things that I read 25 years ago that sometimes I'm sitting down and I go, oh, is that what that means? We need to be patient, keep the helmet of salvation on, and the sword of the Spirit, as Nehemiah was building the war, they had one sword in their hand, and they were building the war and watching the enemy. They were ready to fight. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. And remember, the helmet of salvation is your protection and your deliverance. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, use it. Use it. Use it. God bless. 